Rapunzel had nothing on us when it came to letting our air down. I remember after Silverstone ground bricks, I parted for five days non-stop, out every night. One of those nights consist, consisted of me leaving the property while I was still wearing holy ugg boots and running around the block. Right then, there was a right crew, Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard, to name but two, who had all used to party after the race. At the time of his debut, A20, Melbourne, Australia, 2000, Jensen was one of the youngest ever Formula 1 drivers. 2016 retired after 306 races and currently drives in a Japanese Super GT series. Jensen reveals in How to Be an M1 F1 Driver how he swapped the sticky, sticky floors of real Somerset nightclubs for glitzy Monaco. Full of one crews would party hard in haunts such as Amber Lounge, renowned for its heady mix of royalty, celebrities and Formula One legends, including Shuaka, who was later to suffer traumatic brain injury in a skiing accident in 2013. Jensen says after winning Monaco in 2009, things got seriously messy. We hearted after the race. The next day, Monday, I as principality began to get back to normal of the weekend's facilities. Festivities, we started drinking again from about midday. Sitting at the bar on the beach, we were set down in bottles of rose, texting people that, to join in until there was a whole crew. And between a lot of us, we canned ten magnums of rose. Next, the call went up for a club, which opened especially for us. And there they opened a huge bottle of champagne, a balanzana. It is a 16 normal bottles of champagne in one. Jewel theme, my bottle, my winner's gem of gar, which is only four bottles in one. We drank that, and then, as we were winding down, about to leave, they cracked open another. We finished about 1 a.m. The next day, questioned our 13 hours of drinking, Super Monaco, which went on to become the hit bit of the Monaco tradition, podium finish or not. Super Monday, which went on to become a bit of Monaco tradition, podium finish or not. Sunday after Monaco was, and probably still is, a blast. If you go to Amber Lounge, it's like £550 a ticket just to get in. Then you've got to pay for drinks and a table. While drivers love winning, there's also the agony of poor results, as Jensen found in 2001, as he kept getting beaten. But this then, his death, his then Benetton teammate, Jasholo Feschella, he said, I was in a slump, I was getting flack, not only from the press, also from my boss, Rodozo Benamore who called me a lazy playboy, but not true. I was a highly committed and industrious playboy, but was also the catalyst to Jensen finding a lifestyle which only put him on the path to become the world champion in 2009. <coughs> he says, my change of approach didn't stop me parping completely, just gave me a work social life. The same thing. I took a look for in cars, balance, still be up for all of it on a Sunday night, post-race, when we were like, where's the party? Me, David, Coulter, anyone else who would grow in. you do a bit of party hopping. By now, Jason was swallowing champagne for water, but as, was I jealous after my night out of Avalon, seeing them all with hangovers? Not a bit, mate. They'll be going, oh, we had a great night. How much fun? I'll be sat thinking, awesome, but I won't go, I'll get to drive an out for the one to the car today. Let's do a call as well. As on the Grand Prix circuit, day by day life is wildly extravagant. At races, drivers will often stay at £30,000 motorhomes, which were taken from circuit to circuit, set up ready for the stars when they flew in. Jason had a leopard skin theme 
through the interior. It looked a bit like a children's palace. The fridge was stuffed bizarrely with baby bell cheese. You owned two yachts moored in Monaco. You bought the first for 800,000 when a young driver on a 500,000 a year. The second one, 2014. A cost 5,000 to 6,000 for that with fuel. And was a 28 metres, 92 feet, he says, which isn't a big, if you consider Eddie Irvine. Had a 100 foot boat. Jack Fezens was 145 feet. He says owning a yacht was like having a bag of cash and the whole time you got you on the boat chucking a hundred bills into the ocean. But away from the glamour, toilet humour was commonplace in the pits and garages. Joseph says farting great because it stays in a cockpit. I call my mechanic over. Mate, can I ask you something? He put his head in the cockpit and, and, now, and now, oh, you dirty bastard. Well, then I hold it his arm so he couldn't get away. Sometimes you get in the car a bit early, feel like you're dozing off and get an erection. Lucky it happens okay. Look, it happens okay. But, okay, why do you think they call it a cockpit? This is what passes for sophisticated humour in the Formula One garage. But in 2014, the death of his beloved dad, John, made Jensen take stock of his life. Ray says, said his glory days. This is the stuff of boyhood dreams. I know why do I want to give the impression I'm ungrateful because I spent many of those years punching myself, pitching myself my, at my good fortune. But there's always a but. My father died and we then went some of me. Without him, the padlock didn't, wasn't quite the same. Jensen also loved trouble. He was engaged to English actress, singer Louise Griffiths, before ending their five year relationship in 2005. 2009 began dating model Jessica Malabate in December 2014. Wasn't wed, he wed, but that lasted a year. He was now found in love again. Though he, though, he's engaged to US model Brittany Ward, 28, and July this year, she gave birth to his son Hendrix. Jason now feels his life has been transformed since the world days. He says, I almost impossible to hold down a relationship and be a Formula One driver. It was Brittany in the early days of our relationship who pointed this out to me, probably as I was leaving to catch flight. While in the bad old days, I might have told her she was plain wrong. These days I'm old and ugly enough to realise she was on the money. I was very selfish and having a board from Formula One, I'm a different person now. I try to be kind and generous. In fact, I think I've improved more as a human being the last two years than the rest of my life. That's down to changing priorities, finding love with Brittany being a dog owner and becoming a father. As for Hendrix, maybe one day becoming a Formula One driver, Jesus says, just you try and stop us. I couldn't improve on the way my dad did it. He say, if you're not enjoying it, you should take a break. Tell me and he'll stop. And we never did, of course. Today he's a prized possession. Is a car he drove to win the Formula 1 title. And one day you show it to Hendrix. Though he won't be letting him take it for a spin anytime soon. He says, you don't just turn the ignition key on a Formula 1 car. No, it would cost £50,000 to start it up. And he's insistent of three or four people, all the commuters and the electronics. Now happy with a gentle pace of life, Jason Jensen says, I prefer restaurants these days, nightclubs, definitely not. I couldn't deal with the hangovers. Even for one is not what it w- was, he says. He feels a little different. While well, there, there are still some drivers painting them down red, they are the exception. We are like, do you do your job, let off steam. They like, do your job, go home. I wonder if it's down to social media with your every move tweeted and tracked.